Ah, the Super Nintendo. What a blast from the past. It was definitely one of my favorite consoles, packed with classic games that I could play till my thumbs went numb. I'm talking about games like Donkey Kong Country, Super Mario World, or A Link to the Past. Great times. Now, when I was a kid, I was into everything RPG. So the moment I discovered Super Mario RPG, I begged, borrowed, and... Okay, fine. Maybe I threw in a temper tantrum or two to get my hands on it. To be fair, my parents didn't believe in allowance, so you gotta do what you gotta do. Believe it or not, this game was actually made by Square, but this was a time before they made the great games that we all know and love like Balan Wonder World. Because who could forget such classic designs like Box Fox? So the game starts off with Princess Peach sitting by herself. Now, Mario is inside because he's busy watching Donkey Kong December. Naturally, this is the perfect time for Bowser to sneak in and steal her. After all the commotion, Mario comes running out, and even though he didn't actually see him do it, we're headed to Bowser's castle, because one of two things is going to happen. One, Princess Peach is there, or two, she's not there, but either way, we're going to beat him up. So we get to the castle and are quickly introduced to the combat system, which we're going to cover later, because right now you get nothing for it. It's kind of like Origami King, where battles are fun, but rewards nothing. So we're just going to skip our way through it. This is probably one of the shortest areas in the game, because after a good 15 seconds, we end up in the final area where Peach is being held captive, and the battle begins. After trying to pummel Bowser for three hours, Princess Peach finally spills the beans and lets us know that this isn't working and we need to actually hit the chain instead. I don't know why she couldn't have just started with that. So now we're going to be sending him on a skydiving adventure, but without the parachute. Unfortunately, from 1500 feet below, Bowser throws a Hail Mary and knocks our chain out, taking Mario down with him. But don't worry, Mario has this unique ability that lets him jump higher than Michael Jordan in Space Jam and reunites with the princess. The look on her face makes this all worth it in the end. Now the weird part about the intro of the game is out of every monster that could have ruined this moment, it ended up being a giant sword. Which if I'm being honest, if this ends up being the final boss, I'm going to set this game on fire. I haven't actually made it to the end yet. Maybe it's just me, but I need a villain to hate so I actually have the willpower to beat the game. Not some sword in the stone Excalibur shit, but I digress. Back to the game. After being set soaring through the sky for about six days, Mario crash lands into the chimney of the pipe house and we're left with the delightful task of ruining Toad's day by spilling the beans of what really happened to Princess Peach. Which we'll do right after the snap. This is actually a good thing to know before you start grinding in the game and don't waste all your items while trying to level up. Trying to explain the situation to Toad was like talking to a brick wall. He was unfazed like this is just another day in the Mushroom Kingdom. So back to the castle we go to rescue Peach. Obvious choice. The problem is that big sword that we already hate won't let you inside and destroys the bridge, so now we need to regroup and figure this out because this is the only known entrance to the castle. Probably. Now that the bridge is off the table, we need to see the Chancellor in Mushroom Kingdom and figure out what to do next. But before that, let's talk battles. This game packs a punch in the combat department. If you're a fan of games like the Thousand Year Door, you're going to feel like a pro with timed attacks, blocking, and specials. You can use Mario's Super Jump for maximum damage or unleash Fiery Fury with the Fire Flower. Plus, some enemies will even reward you with a sweet surprise like a max HP boost or attack up after defeating them. Can you believe that this game came out in 1996? Now, if you aren't impressed yet, don't worry, there's more, but let's just take it one step at a time. The great thing about this game is that it steps away from random encounters, so instead of the thrill of being ambushed every 15 steps, you really get to pick and choose when you want to battle. Just watch out though, because those sneaky Goombas are always lurking around every corner, ready to pounce at any moment. <laughs> not today, Goomba. Not to- wait, where'd you go? One thing you'll notice really early on is Toad likes to get into trouble. And after saving him for the 17th time, we see that he's in a bit of a pickle again, so fingers crossed this is the last time. Enter the Hammer Bros. I remember this boss fight being a little bit more challenging, but maybe I was just an underachiever as a kid because after spamming a few Fire Flower specials, this ended up being a walk in the park. I guess all that grinding was completely unnecessary. While saving Toad wasn't on the priority list, we ended up getting Mario's first of many weapons in the game, the hammer, which was great because throwing punches like Mike Tyson didn't really seem like the Mario thing to do. When we get to the castle, we're introduced to the best part of the game, which is Mario reenacting what happened by physically turning into each character, and this is why this game is a masterpiece. Now, the Chancellor has a sick sense of humor where every time you try to leave, he has something else to tell you, but eventually he stops trying to ruin my life and we're on to the next thing. As soon as you step foot outside, we're introduced to a next character, which is Yoshi. You probably noticed already that Yoshi looks a little different in this game, and that's because he's wearing a hat. Now, being the Karen that I am, I needed to investigate what happened. It looks like our friendly neighborhood dino Yoshi has gone a little bit rogue and taken his grandpa's coins. And just when we're about to get to the bottom of it, Toad Villager 7 interrupts us with the burning question, how do you plan on defeating Bowser? After a quick signature jump, Mallow is blown away by the fact that you are the Mario. 
I guess the hat didn't make it obvious enough. So our new pal Malu has enlisted us to help him retrieve the coins from the Purple Menace and officially joins the squad as our first member. Even though he introduces himself as a frog, don't be fooled by his nonsense. He's basically Humpty Dumpty if he ate a devil fruit. Even text box guy doesn't believe him. So the only place left to look for Not Yoshi is the last spot left on the map. Something to know about Not Yoshi is he likes to talk shit. Can't jump? <laughs> Do you even know who you're talking to? It's a me up. We're going to be here a while, so I'm just going to skip ahead. Now that we back Not Yoshi into a corner, he decides to play a little game of tech. And this was the worst part of the game because you're supposed to sneak up on him and it did not go as I had thought. I think the thing that really threw me off about this is I could never tell if I was doing it right. Like either he would run away or he would just talk shit. And either way, I just felt like I lost. Since trying to catch him the normal way wasn't working, Mallow and I came up with a new strategy. While he's busy trying to emotionally damage Mario, Mallow's going to sneak up on him and take him from behind. Wait. Mallow is going to strategically walk around him and ensure that he is cornered so there's no way to escape. Okay, that's better. Our croc friend gracefully accepts defeat and is ready to give back the coin after you beat him in battle because he's an asshole. During this game, I can't help but think that we got the short end of the stick, because would you rather have Humpty Dumpty who splits himself in half for specials, or a purple dinosaur with the funny hat? But maybe that's just me. After all the fun is done, we end up returning to the Mushroom Kingdom, and we can see that everything is totally fine and nothing has changed since we left. I'm going to be honest, originally I thought that these were just shy guys on pogo sticks. Turns out, they're actually a part of the Smitty Gang. Smithy Gang? I think that's what, I, th I think that's the one. If that makes no sense, just think Sword Guys Minions. I will admit that this was actually a nice twist because after leaving Bowser's castle, you kind of forget about everything related to this gang and then the game just hits you with this and I loved it. Something I haven't really mentioned yet is the boss battles are some of the best moments in the game because each is more unique than the last one. We started with Bowser and ended up with King Pogo Stick. We even fought a purple crocodile dinosaur thing that likes to throw bombs. This is the most Mario thing that I've seen in a while. Just a little fun fact, Malo actually has a group special attack, which makes this whole fight significantly easier. Now, me personally, I discovered this about three quarters of the way through. This whole time, I assumed he was like a healer type character or something with his rain ability. So just don't be me, and this battle's going to be over in a flash. After sending those baddies packing, we're rewarded with our first star of the game, and I think this is a great place to end the video. Thanks so much for watching, and if you're still with me, hit that like button and subscribe to the channel, because part two is where the game really shines. Or is it part three? I, I think I just lost all credibility.